You're listening to After the Review. After, after the review. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Uh, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back here, week six of Backyard Bookies. I'm your host, Peter. Joining me as always, my man, Scott. Scott, uh, you took personal offense, it feels like, uh, me beating you. Two weeks ago, and uh, I, well, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't too happy about you beating me. You know, this is a uh, this is a thing I really take a lot of pride in. Uh, big games every week, and uh, you know, I've been doing really well. I think I've had one losing, one losing. week, at least uh, record record wise, and uh, you beat me that week, and I wasn't too happy about that. So I went ahead and uh, picked some good games last week. I, the board looked pretty clear to me. A um, little different this week, but. Last week the board looked really clear and you know went four and one. Uh, picked some really good games. Uh, the one I don't even remember the one I lost. You lost was, SMU uh, minus thirteen and a half. They barely won that that's game. That's right. They Navy. they won by seven. That's right. So I mean it wasn't it wasn't a total L. It wasn't like you know they got their ass kicked or anything. They just didn't win by thirteen and a half. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm happy with it. Four and one's fine. Two and one on the head to head. You know we're just rolling here. Eighteen and seven total. Uh, I think we're up. Or something. You're up. I got. Five, so. I, I can give all the rundowns right here. All right. So you were up 138 last week, uh, bringing your total for the season to a blistering 146.76. So 1476. Pretty good. You're four and one on locks. Um, you hit Coastal Carolina on Thursday night, <clears throat> allegedly. Uh, UTSA, uh, Western Kentucky. You switched. You had the line. UTSA did cover barely. Had them both. I had, had them both. both. Had glad, them both. I'm glad the one, the one that I picked it. So it's all good. Uh, I took the over uh, 70 and a half. That was your lock. Oh, no, that wasn't your lock. That was your uh, hit. Uh, you missed SMU minus 13 and a half. Arkansas Ole Miss was your lock. That game was, you know, a little close for a minute there and then set the record for the highest uh, one point game against two ranked opponents in NCAA history with uh, 101 points scored uh, or whatever, 102 it's, points. It's rare, it's rare when you uh, when you cover an over by almost 40 points. That's, uh, unless, you're, unless you're Texas A&M LSU a few years ago. Uh, uh, they got rid of those overtime. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. So. Uh, especially wow. since that game was 17-7 right before half or whatever it was, or 14-7, I think right before yeah, half. Had, I think they had – 35 at halftime and I'm like all right they're they're halfway so, there they should be able to get some, it and then they, they just got it within like the first 10 minutes of the the third quarter I'm like holy shit what's going on here <laughs> yeah I just kept scoring at least as, I mean I, I guess I guess both Stevens retired or something but they looked they looked just gassed Mac- it was, and, it was, uh, that fourth quarter was a joke uh you think they would cover anybody deep for either team but uh you know credit to Arkansas they did lose that game but they went for the win I do like going for two and going for the win on the road Trust your offense, right? You're not stopping them. Put the ball in our hands for one play. Uh, then your New Mexico SCSU, you hit the under. You were right on projection. It was close. <laughs> I think you gave every score but the exact score <laughs> of the game. Yeah, I think I think I, I think I picked both teams' score, but just not on the same uh, the same, same pick. Guess. I think yeah. I picked. I think I said 38-3 and 31-10 or something. But was... 31 31-10. Watch the Aggie game at the bar and. Uh, pretty pumped up i was in the corner with a few other texas people so they were they were pretty jacked up about it but uh watch that game and there's no other games on except for that game and uh, i'm like you know what we need to stay here about 10 more minutes just to see that game is the other gotta make sure just so, for um, just for covering just to purposes. make sure because i have so much riding on this so we had to watch it and then uh well after after my d- disastrous saturday i just want to say this is why you don't sports gamble folks i mean i caught some bad beats um the sports betting gods I wasn't humble, and they they took it out on me in a bad way. I mean, I don't think we could have had a more accurate breakdown of the Texas-Oklahoma game. I told you there was going to be a wacky play, a defensive score. We had a block punt for a touchdown. Um, Texas scored on the first play of the game. We laughed. We cried. Um, OU was right on the money for Texas to cover and get the W just like I said they would. And then, thanks, Kennedy. Direct snap. Brooks trying to make something happen. He breaks free. Kennedy breaks out. Forget the field goal. Put him with a touchdown. Thanks. Tom I'm going to say. Um, the, 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 the real shitty thing is in here in Utah, they had the, uh, I think it was like five minutes left in the Texas game. And they cut, so long. They, they cut out to the damn BYU game, so I didn't get to see the end of it. I, 
was talking in the group chat, was talking about like what the fuck happened. I have no idea what happened. Um, I do love uh, Texas. Crazy, crazy cover. If you were following Texas's Twitter, you wouldn't know what happened either, because all they tweeted was we taught we tied the game, and then they were MIA for two straight days. So I think they literally died, which was uh, hilarious. Uh, I bet on the Huskies. I lost on the Huskies. The Huskies haven't won in 700 straight days. The numbers were all in my favor, man. The last team they'd beat was UMass. UMass hadn't won in like 800 days. Um, it was it was all in my favor, and it just fell apart in the second half for UConn. Uh, my lock of the week, you know what? If I'm going to miss a lock, that's a good lock to miss. Um, the spirit of Johnny Manziel possessed young Zach Calzada to somehow lead the Aggies straight up over Bamba. Um you know, it happens. I didn't take it as bad. You saw that guy lost 500K who bet Alabama money line. Uh, I, I do have a question for you, though. Yeah. Uh, last week you said you wouldn't pick Texas money line because it uh, might be looked at as a bad Aggie, but you picked against them for your lock. And now you picked, picked against them in your lock, but now you're wearing an Aggie hat. So, I mean, where, where do you stand? Well, I have to represent... Um, I, don't understand, I don't understand where you stand. Well, it was about to be a disaster because it was looked like Bama wasn't going to cover and we were going to lose the freaking game. Um, Zach Calzada found something. I mean, he was pathetic in the second half until those last two drives of the game. He went back to the Zach Calzada I thought I'd get for four quarters. So, there's that. I mean, it happens. Just... It happens. But how, how do you how do you pick against them and then say I can't pick Texas or I'll look like a bad Aggie? Well, I can't how pick Texas you, straight. How, I was you, hold up. I was right on the Oklahoma game. I was looking like, about to look like a goddamn genius, only taking the spread there. Um, because a, I mean, a lot a lot of losers have said that before, Pete. This so. is true. This is true. I mean, Oklahoma's not missing that field goal. They have the best kicker in the country. Um, all Texas had to do was tackle on literally one play. Literally one play left in the game. <laughs> all they had to do was tackle. Um, shit. Who though? You can't tell me this Aggie team showed anything, any sort of life coming into this game. Um, it was a real admiration. Uh, you know, just it happens. Sometimes it happens, and it's not like Bama played terrible. They just they weren't 100% sharp, and Annan played the best game we've seen. In... Oh, they, they just ran into a juggernaut, Pete. That's what happened. Yeah. They ran into a juggernaut. Zach Calzada, the greatest quarterback ever to play. Ever, ever to play. Just an elite player. Not that. Ignore what he did in the third and fourth quarter when the pressure was on. He looked like you back there uh, playing quarterback again. Hey, uh, watch it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, Miss Denver plus one. That came down to literally the last play of the game. They got stopped fourth and goal at the two. Um, tough break. And then Tennessee. Maybe I should have made that my lock because they uh, pretty much curb stomped Jacksonville, which uh, the Urban Meyer. Hey, Urban Meyer's not in the uh, doghouse anymore as the uh, worst coach in the NFL. So that's good. Yeah, how convenient is that, huh? Just amazing. Get another how- story covered over him. That's it's amazing yeah. how that works for Urban. I'm starting to think he has bad things. So I am down. I lost. 136, we are officially in the red. Now 3-2 and two on locks. Tough, tough scene right here. Sad, sad day. All right, let's get into it. Give me your first game for this week. The first game I got uh, is going to be uh, tomorrow. I've got a game tomorrow. Uh, I've got the Cal Bears and the Oregon Ducks. Quack, Ducks quack. coming off a pretty brutal loss against Stanford. Uh, they were they were top they were top four team for a little while. They you were know, they, they, they were there. Uh, they uh they, they they pretty much had everything going for them. They lost to Stanford. Um, they got a bye, they had a bye week this week, so they're coming off a little bye week. Maybe a little mad. They want to get back out there and get her done. You know, Cal is not a very good football team. Um, I'm not sure they I'm not sure they beat here. They beat uh, they beat. I have no idea who that team is. What's K K, K it's CSUS? What's CSUS? No, no fucking clue. And they beat them by twelve. They beat a team by twelve that I've never heard of. It's uh, it's the old FCS Southeast team from NCAA video game. Uh, little little sketch, little sketch. <laughs> they uh, they had a close one against TCU. They have a decent decent defense, but still it doesn't you've been very, look good. You've been very anti TCU on this podcast, so uh, I mean they're not that good. So, so uh, what are you gonna do? Um. Yeah, Oregon's getting to uh, they're they're minus thirteen and a half. I think they can easily cover that. Definitely coming off a bye week. Uh, Friday night they're gonna have the prime time game besides you know your Astros and Red Sox. They'll have that game on, but uh, Oregon Cal will be on as well. I probably won't watch it because you know baseball's 
more important. Much more play, important right now. But play baseball. Thirteen and a half. I think that's a pretty easy cover. It's not a lock, but I think it's a pretty easy cover. Um, Oregon minus thirteen and a half. I'll go. I'll go thirty-three to win thirty on that one. Um, I just think they'll have a good rebound, and you know they're coming off a bye week, so that's a good um, Friday night game. Air at home in Eugene. It's a good atmosphere there, so I uh, think they can cover two touchdowns, no problem. Let's uh, let's stick to Friday night action. We've got a lot of Friday night action this week. There's another football game being played. Um, the Aztecs, your number twenty four San Diego State Aztecs, playing San Jose State. Now, these are the uh, the fighting uh, Nick Starkles. You, those of you that know, another great A and M quarterback, great Arkansas quarterback. Somehow this man still has eligibility. He might be forty, I think. But um, yeah, San Diego State five and zero. Oh. Going again. This line's moved a little bit. I grabbed it a little earlier in the week. Eight point favorites. This feels pretty comfortable here. They're on the road. It's a Friday night. I know a little awkward. San Diego State's covering spreads though. They're four and one against the spread this year. The only one they didn't cover was against New Mexico State, which was thirty one and a half. They won the game by eighteen. So Pretty comfortable covers all year long, and San Jose State is one and five against the spread. They they're not even close against people, and they've been getting some pretty massive numbers here. I mean, their only win they beat New, they beat said New Mexico State team by six points, and then they beat Hawaii. Congrats, you beat Hawaii. So you know, got smoked by USC, got smoked by Colorado State last week. So I think San Diego State, solid ranked team, eight points. You know, shouldn't be no problem here for the Aztecs. I have 22 to win 20. Let me back on the winning track. And San, I mean, San Jose State's been a pretty notoriously bad, bad team in the past, like, 15 years. So, although they had Nick Starkle that one year, but... He's still there. Uh, he's still their quarterback. He's still, still there? Oh, he's, still, he's still there. Holy shit. Still the fighting Nick Starkles. He's 100 years old, I told you. Oh, I didn't think he was still around. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, so, yeah. I like that pick. There you go. <laughs> so, I have, uh, for my second pick, I have the Iowa State-Kansas State. Matchup. Uh, Iowa State is getting six and a half. They're sorry, they're Give it. six and a half point favorites here. Yeah, not getting six and a half. Um, I Kansas State's been playing pretty good. They played a decent game against Oklahoma. They kept it pretty close there. Um, they're not a bad team. You know, they just. Um, I th- honestly think Iowa State's kind of a fraud. They've everyone's been picking them to win everything every single year. They. They've been. I think they were sleepers pretty much by every single expert this year uh, to be a top four team and three and two. Uh, Brock Purdy, he's fine. He's not. He's not some big stud that everyone thinks he is. Um, also, Kansas State, very hard place to play. Manhattan is uh, notoriously notorious tough. For, notoriously, notoriously difficult to play in. Kansas State's getting six and a half points. Um, I think that's. A decent, decently easy cover for Kansas State, six and a half. Um, I'll take them. Uh, six and a half. I'll go 33 to win 30 on that one. It's, just, it's, it's a tough place to play. Uh, Kansas State, I don't think, is that great. Um, they've, they lost to Baylor. Uh, they lost. They, they put up a decent game against Iowa, but um, yeah, they're coming off some a really big win against Kansas, but like they're going to oh. play a better team this week, so they're playing at a, at a that's it's a completely a completely different game from last week. So they're going to have to kind of figure it out because uh, Kansas is not a good, it's no. never been a good no, team. Never. Oh um, no, they were one so year. It's a completely, it's year. literally a complete one eighty from the game they just played last week. So, uh, all right, let's see. To win thirty. I got a. Uh, I'm gonna change things up a little week. Uh, Friday night action. You talked about uh, watching some playoff baseball. I'm gonna head to the diamond here. We have the ALCS presented by Hefty Trash Cans, Nikon Cannons, and Apple Smartwatches in Houston against the Red Sox. Houston, since the implementation of said trash cans, are pretty dominant in game ones. Uh, at pretty dominant at home in general. Their only game one loss at home since 2017 was the World Series against the Nationals, where they lost every game at home. So I'm going to take that as a not going to count that. That didn't happen. Um, 
Getting pretty good at, uh, you know, Houston's a favorite here. Only minus 141. Um, this feels like free money. Boston coming off back-to-back walk-off wins. Way too jacked up. Uh, their starting pitching has been very suspect, Boston. Um, I'm sure. I haven't checked. I'm pretty sure they have Evaldi on the bump. He's probably been their only decent starter this year. But, again, Houston is a better baseball team, especially at home. They don't lose game ones at home. I feel like this is easy. I got 30 to win. It's a little awkward number. 30 to win 23, I believe. What's the money line on that one? It is one, minus 141 for Houston. It's a very awkward number. Um, it's moved down a little bit. Some money's coming in on Boston, but I figure that's a bunch of uh, typical Boston fans. It's... Um, there was a Boston was getting good odds early. I think they were like plus two twenty, and now they're only at plus one fifty. So people threw a bunch of money. Oh, the projected starter is Chris Sale versus uh, Farmer Valdez. Um, Chris Sale got really roughed up in his last start. Um, lefties versus that righty lineup. Okay. Um, yeah, I take the Astros right here. Feels pretty comfortable. Uh, some people know I would never, ever, 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 ever pick a game that Framer Valdez is pitching because he's an absolute piece of shit. But uh, <laughs> that's for another time. Uh, I hate that person. Uh, that's a that's a personal pretty issue. Pretty much anything in the anything in the world, but that is a personal issue. Not a good person. Uh, <laughs> okay, pitcher. Treat me very well. Okay, pitcher. Okay, he's a pitcher, but not a very good person. He's a piece of shit. But um, I, I mean, with Chris Sale pitching too, I was, that is interesting that they're getting. Minus one forty. I think it's a. I think it's a good pick. I think it is. Uh, for my third one, NC State Boston College. Uh, NC State is the three point favorite on the road against Boston College. Has been playing it pretty good. Pretty good so far. They just played that game against Clemson that I, you know, lost. Uh, did not. Did not pick well. Uh, I did. Right. No, no. I took it. Oh, you did. I, I, I did not. Yeah. Uh, but they are on a bye. They did come off a bye week just like uh, Oregon did. I mean, so did NC State, but. Um, honestly, I really like teams that come off bye weeks and playing at home. That always helps. I feel like that's a um, and coming off losses that are that are tough losses. NC State just got done with uh, Louisiana Tech. Uh, they also beat Clemson, but uh, coming off a game against Louisiana Tech, they kept kept it pretty close. They were supposed to be 19, 18 and a half point favorites. They only won by seven. So um, maybe not as good as we think they are, just because they beat Clemson. Maybe Clemson's a little not let, very good. Could have been a little let down. Big win. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think NC State is not as good as we all think they are, but uh, I think I think they're about even with Boston College. I think a three point line is probably right, um, especially Boston College at home. Um, I think I'm going to take BC plus three. Uh, I think they'll keep it close, fifty two point uh, over under. So it's looking like maybe a twenty eight to twenty four ish kind of game sort of close they'll have some touchdowns back and forth um yeah i like, I like the team on the road coming off a of bye week uh getting points um i think that's a pretty safe pick i don't think it's it's like a it's definitely not a sure thing you know getting getting anything you know that close three points you're not getting that much but um i think it's a, i think it's a good bet i'll go also go 33 to 130 on this one uh boston college plus three uh against NC state at home okay i am going to stick in the Big 12, like you had earlier. Texas, got no breaks here. Got Okie State, number 12 Okie State, coming into town. Um, I don't know what kind of Texas team I'm going to see. You know, when you lose a game like that, you blow a 21-point lead to your rival. Uh, First-year head coach, the wheels could fall off the wagon. You know, it's a big, big mystery. Um, Oki State's playing a really good ball. Looks like the other competitor to Oklahoma to win the Big 12. Um, and this line's moved down a little bit, but I picked it up. Oki State's getting five and a half points here on the road. I think Oklahoma State's not only the better team, I don't trust Texas coming off of that loss. I think they could be really flat. It's an 11 o'clock kickoff, those early morning kickoffs. Teams have been known to be flat here. Um, Sark's got a big challenge in front of him because you could easily lose a locker room after what you did in that game. Um, so, yeah, Okie State 5-0. and Texas hasn't beaten a ranked team yet this season. That's uh, both their losses. They don't really have a quality win at all, I think, on the season. Okie State's actually, you know, they beat Baylor last week. Baylor was feeling pretty good. Kansas State, again, 
beaten Boise State on the road in Boise State. That's a tough place to play usually. So I like the Cowboys here. Getting five and a half points on the road feels pretty pretty solid here. Um, I expect Texas to be flat in the first half, especially just, you know, early kickoff is I, – I hate those 11 o'clock kickoffs in the central time zone. Yeah. It's uh, pretty tough for them. But – um. So, yeah, I think this is pretty comfortable. I got 22 to win 20 because I'm not letting Texas burn me just in case they uh, actually show some cojones and uh, step up in a big spot here. I like it. Um, so the fourth game that I have is one of the games we're going to be picking, but um, I can go ahead. Ooh, we got a dinger. We got ooh Darren Ruff dinger. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Interesting. One to one, bottom of the six, looking good. Um, anyway, I have a game that we're gonna pick later. I'm, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it now. Go ahead, it's tease for my lock. It. This is for my lock, but tease for the uh, So we have Georgia and Kentucky this... playing in a big ranked matchup. Um, it was a really, it, there's a really interesting line in that game. It's, it's, it's the over under is 45, 44.5, 45 and sorry, forty four and a half. But the line is twenty one and a half. It is it is interesting because I think Kentucky can score two touchdowns. Uh, they're if they score even if they score three, that'd be even crazier because I know I know Georgia hasn't given up hardly any. I think they've given up one one, one touchdown, touchdown. In the season. I think they've given um, up. I think I think Kentucky's good enough to at least score two. So that takes off. Let's see. So thirty and a half points left. I definitely think Georgia can score thirty one points. Kentucky can score 14. I, I, I think they can get that done. I, it's it's betting a lot against Georgia defense because they have not given up shit all year uh, to pretty good teams. But um, Kentucky is what ranked 15? 12? 12. 12. They're, they're, they're all the way up to 12. 12. 12. 11. 11 even in some polls, I think. Oh, they're not a fraud. They've they've won really good games. They've, they've beaten they can just, teams. They can just score. Two touchdowns for me. They can cover. This game can definitely cover, and and even and even Georgia can possibly cover it by themselves. I, I Georgia might be that good, good enough to do that. It might be that good. They're, they're good enough to do that as well. I think forty four and a half is just about as as low as you can get. It almost it's almost it's close to a lock for me, but it's not not the lock this week. I'm gonna go fifty five to win fifty on this one. Ooh. I feel very confident. Very um, confident in the as over. Long, as long as the Wildcats can score. Give me two touchdowns. My my That's only my only really hesitancy is um, Georgia ain't giving up big plays, and Kentucky loves to pound the rock, so we might get a short game here. Um, that would be my only true. only concern here. But I do think Kentucky's the real deal, and they could probably get in the end zone once or twice. And Georgia for sure can get you four, three to four touchdowns. So um, I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't be as confident as you are, but you have the hot hand, so you know what you're talking about here. Um, let me stick. Not, not stick to. Uh, I'm going to the Big Ten. Purdue and Iowa. Iowa coming off a massive, massive win against Penn State due to some quarterback injuries and shenanigans there. Um, Iowa's the real deal. I, we've watched a lot of Iowa. They play some great defense. They control the ball. They can score touchdowns. They do it all pretty well. Um, I know they had their back against the wall, but they really stepped up against Penn State. They got Purdue coming to town. Line's only 11.5. Purdue is not a good football team. Purdue's never been a good football team. They had a good football player once upon a time, and he wasn't even really that good when he was there. You know, uh, Drew Brees. So 3-2 and two, uh, Purdue. Um I was five and one against the spread. They cover spreads. They cover big spreads too. Uh, I think this is easy, easy pickings here. Purdue's coming off a loss against Minnesota. Minnesota, another bad team. Um, barely beating Illinois. Not another good team. So I think this is easy cover for uh, Iowa. They're number two in the country, and number two in the country covers eleven and a half points at home uh, every day to Sunday. I think. So I am going thirty-three to win thirty. Very nice. All right, lock uh, it, lock it in, baby. So for my lock of the week uh, this week, uh, we're gonna pick a Miami and North Carolina. Um, I had this game when I picked it. North Carolina was a seven-point favorite. Uh, it's moving up to seven and a half. I think it actually started at, I want to say three. 
uh, three points has moved up four points uh, since it opened, which kind of scares me a little bit. That always kind of scares you when, when the line kind of jumps that much. Uh, Big money coming in on the Canadians. Or coming in on a so, North Carolina. On, on North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina, yeah. Um, but really looking at I mean, even the head-to-head in the last couple of years, uh, Miami has lost both games. Um, UNC's covered both games the last two times. Um it's 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 interesting because the last two games of in, in nineteen they played forty six was a total and then the next year was seventy two <laughs> completely different teams whoops um, but I mean history does repeat itself so no it uh, just that's something we can talk <laughs> it just <rhymes. laughs> um yeah it scares me a little bit um, but you hate Derek King not, so not enough not enough that's really the other thing. Uh, Miami has not played anybody. If anybody well, not played anybody in one, the only two games they've won is ooh, they played Appalachian State. They beat them by two. Um, hey, don't don't sleep on Appalachian and what State. Is, I don't know what CCSU is. What is that? I have no no idea what that is. They beat them sixty nine to nothing. Lol. Um, lost three pretty big beatdowns uh, to Michigan State and Bama, and just lost to Virginia. Just so so it's like they're not. Not going to beat anybody good, and I think seven points is very easy for Sam Howell um, to cover. I got it at seven. It's at seven and a half now. I'm taking it at seven. I'm not moving it. I looked on Wednesday. It's seven. Um, he's protecting against. The, a, he's protecting the also, push. <laughs> exactly. Uh, North Carolina is a uh, is, is a home as well. I like the home team. I think it's the the Ericless King Miami Hurricanes. I don't think he's even that good anyway. Um. I think it's a pretty pretty easy cover. Uh, UNC minus seven, one hundred to win ninety one. I right. think it's uh, I'm gonna lock it in. Trust trust in, it. trust in Mac Brown. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right, I am going back to the uh, Sundays. Um, I, we got two teams playing that are both one and four against the spread this year. They're both terrible against the spread. Uh, but one of these teams is really good, and the other team not so much. Uh, Kansas City. Really struggling. This is a must-win. We cannot lose this football game again. They had this two weeks ago against the Eagles, and I locked that one in. That was their one cover against the spread. I think this is it again this week. Uh, Mahomes and the offense, they're playing football team. There's a lot of stuff going on with football team, with emails and all this stuff. The defense for Washington has not been good this year. They've been giving up points left and right. This is not the defense we saw last year that was just... Dominant, insanely dominant. Coming off a loss to the Saints, Jameis Winston threw for four touchdowns against them. Pat Mahomes could throw for four touchdowns in his sleep against this defense, it feels like, if Jameis Winston can do that. The offense is not the issue with Kansas City. It is the defense. Um, It's only six and a half, though. So all I got to do is get a touchdown. I think Kansas City rolls in this spot. They are a very good football team with a bad defense. Um, I think this is just the outscore team. They're going to put up some points this week. Look for, if you got the Chiefs in fantasy, look for a 40-piece maybe. I think this is an offensive explosion written all over it. Things got a little thrown off against Buffalo. They can't afford to lose another game. They lose this game. They are in real trouble of making the playoffs with that division. Chargers are on fire. I know the Vegas is going to hit. Vegas might start tanking, but you got to keep up with the Chargers. This feels easy. I'm not picking Taylor Heineke ever. Um... And the numbers show that. So I'm locking in 100 to win 90 on the Chefs. You haven't let me down yet. I think this is a safe bet. <sighs> you picking your Chiefs. They haven't let me down yet. They haven't let me down. Oh, they're always my team that I feel really good about picking, but then don't feel good about picking because they never cover. Uh, but but they've covered, to, one, one, they've covered one line this year, and so but so is Washington. I know who they're playing. I mean, Fo- I know who they're football playing. team doesn't I, I cover. Get, I know who they're playing. I get the line. I understand all that. But once again, I'm talking to you about they're professional football players. They get all get paid money just because just because Kansas City is some dynamic offense doesn't mean they're playing a bunch of professional athletes. So we saw that with saying, Houston. So, but Buffalo is a lot. Well, okay, yeah, okay, uh, Houston, sure. forty points right there. If they played again, it'd probably be a little closer. Trust me, I, I guarantee it'd be a lot closer. 
Davis, Davis was their quarterback. Davis. Was. Played the same spot in yeah. Philadelphia, covered comfortably against the Eagles. I think no problem. This offense, they got to score. They got to win. They can't lose. They're a good football team. They can't lose. They can't even make it close. It's when a team is focused in versus a team not focused in. Football team, they're, they're, they're not, they got nothing to play for. That was a. That was the whole thing last week when uh, you know, the Colts in the first half against the Ravens. Second half, that was besides the fourth quarter collapse. Colts were dominating that game because they were really locked into that game, and Baltimore wasn't necessarily interested against the Colts. You know, desperation is key in the league. So I feel the Chiefs are very, very desperate at this point. I mean, it's really like you said, they lose this game. It's it's over. It's, uh, I mean, there's 17 games, but being being two and four. In that division, yeah, it's I mean, tough. It's the tough. Team, I mean, the team that's currently winning, right? Is, are the Raiders still in? No, the, Raiders the Chargers are in first. Yeah, I guess they're not. Okay, yeah, it, it's going to be tough to beat them. They're they've already lost to them at home. Already lost to the Chargers in case. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just saying, beat yeah. beat their in their division. That's, yeah. it, Justin Air Bear is uh, quite the player. He's so. a good at football. Well, more on that later. <laughs> yeah, later. All right, head, um, head to head picks. <laughs> Like I said in uh, the first game, we have Georgia Kentucky. Man, as long as, as long as Kentucky doesn't squelch the way across the the field and not score any points, I think uh, the over is going to be in play forty four and a half. So I'm going to pick the over. I'm going to pick the over. Uh, I love. I'm picking George to cover. Uh, twenty one and a half is a big number. Kentucky's a good football team. Don't get me wrong. Georgia is frightening. Georgia is frightening. That might be the best college defense I've ever seen in my life. They suffocate you from an offense. They don't let you do anything you want to do. They rally to the football. They tackle. They tackle. They tackle. Kirby Smart knows what he's doing here. Um, I think this is a close, close, close is game for Georgia. But Georgia hasn't let us down once this year, picking again with these massive lines. Um, so, yeah, give me the dogs. I think the dogs and everybody else in college football till further notice. Like, I feel like it's hard to pick 20 and a half, but, but it's, it's also very easy. I, I don't I don't know. I don't, with Georgia, like, it doesn't matter what line you throw out there. You almost feel like you have to pick it. Right, so. yeah. We did the same thing a couple um, weeks with Arkansas. They haven't let us down yet, Georgia. The dogs have not let us down yet. It's also, it's also one of those games that I've been, been saying, like, if you pick Kentucky to, to cover and they get their ass, at ha- ass hand to them, you'll be you, like, oh, you well. feel like an idiot. an idiot. You're an idiot. And then when you, if you pick Georgia and they don't cover, okay, well, I pick, okay. There's a big Georgia, line, like, you know. It's okay. not. You're always go with the heavyweight. You won't feel nearly as bad. Go with the, go with the heavyweight champ, as one would say. Um, in that situation. All right, what was our second game? Oh, Browns yeah. Cardinals. Browns Cardinals. Browns Cardinals. Browns Cardinals. The Cardinals are on the road against Cleveland. Maybe their best opponent yet. I would probably say. Yeah. Especially at home. Yep. Um. Cleveland. Cleveland I feel like it's just Cleveland's just a little inconsistent for me. I, they don't. They don't play their best every single week. They're a very good team. Trust me. But uh, they're, they're uh, little... Arizona's been hot. Arizona's been hot. They have. They're last they, undefeated. They got, Undefeated. They're the last undefeated team, um, and I think they're real. I really do. I think they're they they might not they might not you know get to the Super Bowl, but uh, well, they are a real team. They're almost they a lock win not division. To. They're almost a lock not to get to the Super Bowl. Undefeated teams, last undefeated teams. It goes bad. It goes bad. Oh. Uh, from a staff. Uh, yeah, the Card- the Cardinals undefeated Cardinals. They are on the road, but they are getting three points. Uh, it's going to be hard for me not to pick. Cardinals. I got to pick the Cardinals in this one. They're getting three. Uh, they can keep it close. If they win by a field goal, then I push, whatever. Or, if, sorry, if Cleveland wins by a field goal, then I'll push, push whatever. I mean, it's, like I said, NFL NFL games for me are so hard to pick. There's, I mean, how can you really tell the difference between the Cardinals and the Browns, except for the Browns being at home? That's pretty much the only reason they're getting three points. I, well, uh, They're giving three points they're, because uh, they're at home. They're uh they got two Oklahoma quarterbacks. <laughs> um, Browns coming off the first. Browns were the first team in NFL history last week to accumulate 400 yards of offense, not turn the ball over, and lose the game. And they had 500 yards of offense, and they still lost yeah. to Herbert. And I love Browns fans crying about the officials this week when they didn't get the when they they were dead silent the week before against Minnesota when they got out bailed out on calls. Um, like you said. 
Uh, Browns all over the place. Uh, their defense gave up single-digit points back-to-back weeks and then gave up a 40-burger. I mean, Justin Herbert good, but there were guys running wide open. You and me could have scored touchdowns out there with some of those plays. There were dudes wide open. Uh, I don't know what... The Browns are very inconsistent. They are at home. Baker Mayfield and OBJ, it just... It doesn't work. I don't know what it is. They just... They don't work. OBJ drops a ball... Baker can't hit OBJ when he's open. It just it doesn't work. Uh Cardin the only thing that scares me about the Cardinals here in this spot, I am gonna take the Cardinals. Their run game was really bad against San Francisco last week. Um Kyler does struggle a bit with elite defensive ends that can get a pass rush, especially that can run with him, and they don't fall for the spin. Uh San Fr- Nick Bosa gave him everything he could handle last week. Um, now they see him every year, twice a year, so they may be more familiar. I don't know how a uh, five foot eight Kyler is going to get away from Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is a scary human being, and he's probably as fast as him. And they're ex teammates from A and M. About to say, I think I think Miles Garrett will probably softly put him on the ground. I, I don't know. He's not going to. He's not, he's not going to end his life. He's going to softly put him on the ground. They are ex teammates. But so he's got he's bad blood. Nice. Kyler, Kyler bailed on Miles. Kyler bailed on Miles. Yes, yeah, that is true. He did. So, and I just saw today Miles Garrett put up Halloween decorations, and they are the tombstones of the quarterbacks he has sacked this year. So, Oof. that's a, a scary man <laughs> if I've ever seen one. Very alpha move. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Kyler and his hazy visor are pretty, uh, pretty tough to catch. He might not see run. him. I'll, even, My- even if, uh, yeah, he's too I mean, big. Mighty Mouse. He's Miles <laughs> Garrett, but he. Could, He's not faster than Kyler Murray. Yeah, uh, he might be. Faster. I don't know. I would take that race. I'd like to see that race. Pound for pound, he's definitely faster than him. But he might be too big. He might go right between Miles' legs. Who knows? <laughs> Kyler's so small. So yeah, that's the only thing I'd be worried about here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take uh, the Cardinals. Like you said, three points is a good number on the road here. I would not be shocked if the Browns come up big in this spot and beat up the Cardinals. Um, they struggle with Minnesota, Arizona, and Cleveland runs the ball a lot better than Minnesota did. So that could be a big, big issue moving forward. And then our last game. What did I pick as our last game? Oh, Chargers the LA, Ravens. The LA Clippers and the Baltimore Ravens. This is a good game. This is a very good game. This is a good game. Crazy it's not the Sunday night game. They have you know, like Seattle and Pittsburgh. This is this is the best game of the week, I think. And they I have don't... that might have that as a noon game and they, uh, you know sometimes oh, in, inj- injuries you know russell got hurt i think maybe people thought pittsburgh was going to be a little bit better um yeah uh lamar coming off the fourth quarter of fourth quarters ever you know i did see he has the highest completion percentage ever for a guy who threw 46 pass attempts he had he was 86 percent clip on 46 pass attempts threw for over 400 yards um Lamar, if his receivers catch the ball, he can throw the football. He is still in, he still struggles with some accuracy issues, especially on short short stuff. Uh, Justin Herbert has got to be top three now, top four MVP candidates for the Chargers. Um, sling the man slings the rock. Um, this is a sexy game. I like it. Everybody should watch it at noon. I am gonna take the Ravens here though at home, two and a half. I think this is a spot west to east is a little bit tough for the Chargers. The Ravens are the more experienced team. I think this is a spot where you can get tripped up. Chargers coming up. I mean, Chargers are riding high off of that win against Cleveland. Let's be honest. That game was over. Their kicker missed the extra point. The game was over. And uh, they got one back. So I'm going to go with Lamar here. I think it's an interesting game. Everybody should watch it if you haven't seen Justin Herbert. I know there's people out there that... You know, not everybody watches football like we watch football. They may not know Justin Herbert. Get acquainted with Justin Herbert and his, uh, you know, he's he's going to be the future. So uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I like your pick. Um, all your reasons. I actually really lo- I like all your reasons. But I also like the Chargers getting points. I know they're on the road. Okay. Um, it's, really, it's just really tough for me to not pick them. Getting points when they're probably the best team in football right now. Ooh. The Bills, maybe. That might be a hot take. Um, That's a hot take. Woo, I got to get the fire the alarm. And then the Chargers probably second for me. Um, nobody talks about Justin Herbert. Well, some do now, so, but a lot of people don't talk about Austin Eckler. Ooh, uh, a little scat back. He's a monster. Scat back. I think he ha- I think Austin Eckler has like twelve abs. I think I've heard. He's like he has like a twelve pack. Just one ab. Twelve pack. Are you no. sure it's not one ab? It's just one ab going up his entire body. 
to his neck. Oh, it's, it's 12 different abs. Oh. It's, it's incredible. This guy is a absolute monster. He was doing one, like, like one arm pull ups or something. Like he did like 50 of them or some shit. This guy's an absolute monster. Catches balls in the backfield. He's a little, as, as most, uh, you know, cliche reporters would say, he's a little gym rat, a little spark plug kind of running back. Um, if, if he has a big game, which he could, I think it, I, I think the Chargers could definitely win the game, if not just cover. Uh, but like you said, I mean, Baltimore on, at home coming off a really big win. Chargers having to, you know, fly out to Baltimore across the entire country for a noon game. Get all that. Um, but just for me, it's, it's Justin Herbert with points. It's really hard for me to pick, pick against that. But, um, I can see, I could honestly see it going either way. I got already just got done saying I'm not a big NFL picker because if these teams if these if these teams played five times five times in in LA and five times in Baltimore I think it'd be five and five it's it's really really hard and I think the only reason Baltimore is the favorite is because they're on the road I, I don't um, and I think I think the Chargers would be like a four point favorite at home ooh spicy uh, maybe a, maybe a five point favorite. That would so, uh, that's not true. Two and a half. The home field is like two and a half, so they'd be probably two and a half at home. Also, it's about yeah. So it's, it's it's really it's really just like who plays mono, mono who, who plays the best. It's it's there's no real. I don't think there's any real strategy in, in picking this game. It's really just who you feel is going to win, and I I want to pick a team with points. Really all uh, all all comes down to. Uh, don't hold it against me, Herbert. Uh, fantasy wise, uh, please, I need you. My, my we're struggling over here. Yeah, fighting Justin Herberts is the only thing keeping my team afloat. So I get it. I get it. Um, you want to give a quick rundown of your picks right here uh, before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, so I got the Oregon Ducks tomorrow night, uh, except it'd be today if you're listening Friday. on Friday. Get on uh, it. Get 30 on it. 3 to win 30, uh, minus 13 and a half. Uh, Georgia, Kentucky, we picked that game in our head to head as well. Over 44 and a half. Uh, 55 to win 50 in that one. Big game. Probably my biggest bet besides my lock so far. As long as Kentucky scores, please score two touchdowns. That's all I need from you. Get, get some kind of pick six, something. Run the ball. I don't care. Score two touchdowns for me, please. Uh, Kansas State with, with some points, six and a half at home, 33 to win, 30 against Iowa State. Kansas State playing at home. It hasn't hard to play in. I don't think Iowa State's that good. Uh, I think Kansas State will cover. Boston College uh, plus Three, I also don't think NC State's as good as everyone thinks they are. They beat Clemson, but still everyone beat Clemson so far or came close to beating Clemson so far. <laughs> um, both coming off buys. I'm going to pick a team that's at home. 33 to win 30 in the lock of the week. Sam Howell and Mac Brown uh, to absolutely kick the shit out of Miami because Miami um, has not beaten anybody and they've lost to everyone else. Um, <laughs> and De'Aaron King is not that good and neither is his backup. Uh, um, seven right. points. I think it's pretty. It's pretty easy to pick uh, seven points for that one. Um, so yeah, lock of the week. Uh, Go Tar Heels. I need to keep track of all the teams you have personal vendettas against, and it's kind of hilarious. Uh, I hate teams because I pick them and they lose. You hate teams and bet against them and win constantly. So <laughs> we got opposite going here. All right, uh, Friday night, like we said, we got a lot of action for us. Uh, sticking to go baseball, I got the Astros game one of the ALCS presented by Trash Cans Are Us. Um, football field, San Diego State minus eight at San Jose State. Go fighting Nick Starkles. You would have no chance against the uh, Kawhi Leonard's. Uh, Okie State plus five and a half on the road against the Horns. Horns going to let down on Saturday, I think. No problem here. Um, Iowa, 11 and a half favorites against Purdue at home. Number two team in the country. Act like it. And my lock of the week, Kansas City Chiefs and the desperate, desperate Patrick Mahomes' six and a half point favorites. I just need a touchdown against football team. Um, so, yeah, that's my lock. Lock it in. Uh, all that stuff's on screen for y'all to keep track of it. Three Friday, three Friday night action games. I love to see it. Love to see it. Um, then, so yeah, uh, I think that's gonna do it for us this week. Again, see y'all next Friday. Yeah. Also, oh. follow up on action too, because we're both uh, both on action. Have our picks up. We have our records up. Um, I, my can... my username is Scott underscore Long. If you want to. If you're dying to dying to follow my picks, if you're, I don't, what, I don't know what the latest your, breaking your action on his but, picks. Um, want to follow us? Go for it. It'd be great. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend. Love picking games. 
a lot of Friday action, a lot of baseball. We got NBA coming up here soon too. So we got. Some, I throw some association games in there too. So hey, we got some hockey um, too. We got the puck. A lot of puck. sports coming up. It won't just be college football for me soon. It'll be other sports as well, like taking the NBA as well. So right. looking forward to it. Perfect. So, all right. Again, see y'all next weekend. It's next Friday.